two chapters today, and that would be Crutcher's Tale and The Bribe. And I've got some questions about the title of that second one. The title of the first chapter, uh, pretty obvious, because Crutcher's Tale is exactly what we're getting. Um, in which we find out, hey look, <laughs> we can't vilify the house elf either. Or Regulus Black. And we can humanize Lily Potter, which is super nice. Like, that's sort of that start where he's reading her letter and it's this moment, he says, where he's seeing, he realizes she does her G's the same way. And he's seeing this little wave of familiarity throughout the letter. In that moment, it sort of solidified for me what the Harry Potter series is for me. Um, and a lot of other books. And it's that moment where you're reading a book and you just feel somebody reach out from the book and take your hand. Um, and it's this moment of recognizing something or someone, some emotion, some feeling, some want, some need, uh, just familiarity in, in writing. And to have it in this moment where Harry's thoughts are, are really getting him down and he can't stay still because that's one of the worst things, particularly for someone who deals with depression, is that moment at night or very early in the morning when you are trying to sleep and your head is just your worst enemy. And so to have that moment defeated by Lily Potter writing about her son and Harry just having this moment where he can feel her right there is heartwarming for me. It is one of my favorite moments in this work. And it, again, on the whole, is actually not super important. We do find out what happened to the rest of the letter and to the rest of the picture and who's been going through everything, but that's not connected to this familiarity and this love that Harry suddenly feels in his chest and these little waves from his mother in every G she writes. Eh, I wish it stayed that happy-go-lucky, but it, it doesn't. <laughs> um, because we then have this moment actually repeated, um, not with Harry, but with Crutcher. Because Crutcher is suddenly this person who needs this familiarity and this kindness, and in a lot of fronts again has been denied it. We are seeing how much of a hypocrite Sirius was when he said, don't look, don't judge somebody how they treat their superiors, but how they treat those they see as inferior. Because Sirius did not treat Crutcher well. So of course Crutcher acted out. What did you expect him to do when, again, you're making the assumption from the beginning that he was terrible? And we're actually seeing, even within these two chapters, a big improvement with Crutcher's attitude, where again, he's even trying with Hermione, and you can't change people's perspectives and biases overnight. So the fact that we're seeing the point where he does sort of try and acknowledge her politely, um, in the moment he bows to Harry, he bows to Ron, and then he sort of does this thing, like, that is a big step. That's a fantastic step. Crutcher needs the, these little waves from the people he's lost just as much as Harry does. So Harry giving him the fake locket uh, with the letter inside, that's, that's important because that's Regulus waving back at Crutcher. Especially for something like, that had to be terrifying both times for Crutcher, this moment with the Inferi, and all he's thinking is Master Regulus told me to come home, that speaks to the strength of this character and the strength of the house elves 
as a whole when the kindness of a person makes them overcome so much that everybody else wouldn't be able to overcome. Um, and then for Regulus to make the decision not to use Crutcher in that same way, um, but to sacrifice himself. Which sort of brings me on to the, the second big topic that I'm seeing across these chapters, which is the conversation between sacrifice and selfishness. Which I am realizing very quickly within this book that those are not mutually exclusive terms. You can be somebody who's willing to make great sacrifices and still in a lot of ways actually be very selfish. Um, for example, with Regulus, who's actually the lesser that we're seeing, um, it is sort of this moment we are seeing this great sacrifice on Regulus's part um, for, for his destruction and to try and move the destruction of Voldemort along. But if you look carefully again, you can see some moments of very selfishness in these decisions. Uh, for example, he actually forbids Crutcher from telling any of his family members this story. Which I think would have made a big difference in Sirius's attitude, both towards Regulus's memory and Crutcher, if Crutcher had been able to tell Sirius. But it's this idea, again, of keeping to the family code and keeping uh, the family's image, which we really see with Regulus and, and Sirius's pushback against that, actually prevents them from communicating even across this time period. If this story had been shared, differences, big differences, could have happened. Um, but Regulus made the decision not to do it that way. The other big sacrifice selfishness thing that we're seeing is Remus Lupin, who I sort of want to smack in this chapter. Because um, I agree with what a lot of Harry says. I think, again, maybe we could have said this a little well, a better, because uh, using your words in a calm and cool manner is always better than just yelling at someone for being a coward. Um, especially with Remus, because we know Remus is actually being very logical, and he is sort of talked himself into this logical idea that this is the best bet. And it is a sacrifice. He's sacrificing his life with his family, and he's sacrificing very possibly his safety in his life to go on this mission, but he has no idea what this mission is. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, but again, we're seeing very selfish motives for this, um, which is the image that the rest of the world has of him, which is actually overriding everything else. Because he's not thinking about how Tonks knew about this and made this choice. And how a child who grows up with his father is going to love his father if his father is loving and doesn't abandon them, and it isn't going to matter to that kid if his father was a werewolf. Not if he raised the kid right. None of the Order cares. Like, his friends and family don't care, but he is sort of seeing this and having been pushed again to this position. It's the same idea with Regulus. You have to keep up this image, and for him, he's saying, I've ruined this image uh, for Tonks. Yeah, just, you sort of already ruined it for her, so like, turning back now isn't going to solve the problem. And truth, it will probably make it worse, because you're not there to help. So Harry is correct in what he says when he points out that Remus is actually being very selfish in this moment. He's not doing it for the common good. He's doing it because he's running away from, from his problems just as much as anybody else is. So it's sort of interesting because you generally think you have to be completely selfless to make sacrifices, and that's obviously not true as we sort of look at these things, generally, yes, they are making self-sacrifices and they are being very selfless in these moments. But you can see little catches 
which just brings us back to that whole humanizing thing. These characters are flawed, they're not perfect. So even in the moments where they're making their very historical and heroic choices, we just have to keep in mind that it's not always going to be one motive. And some of those motives might be a little eh. Does that make any of the choices that these characters make worth any less? I don't think so. I certainly don't think so, especially with Regulus. Like, he made that choice, and that choice changed the fate of the world. Um, because it led to this recognition of who knows what about what. Could we have saved Dumbledore if, again, this story had gone through from Sirius then on to Dumbledore? <laughs> that's, that's probably, again, one of those uh, trail of thoughts that we don't necessarily want to go down because we're going to run into a lot of issues. And uh, issues, I think, that are going to be better, better handled when we handle uh, the life and lives of Albus Dumbledore, which is going to get its own chapter. Yeah. Because that's just a can of worms. So we are sort of seeing this movement through these chapters of trying to make these choices but also being very selfish in them. Harry sort of does this too because he lets himself um, get angry, like this righteous anger, and that's a very selfish choice on his part. And he sort of recognizes it afterwards when he says, I shouldn't have called him a coward. Um, so it's not just these other characters. Like, we're seeing it with the Golden Trio, too. Um, especially when they all start sort of, like, bickering, and it's like... <laughs> um, you can see it with Dumbledore's fam family. Kendra and Ariana, the entire family moving, the choices that both the boys are making, the choice of the mother. We're all seeing this sort of combination between sacrifice and selfishness. Um, Sometimes at war and sometimes actually working very well together. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that our second chapter here is called The Bribe. Um, what is that referring to exactly? I don't actually know. Um, could it be Remus attempting to join the Golden Trio. If so, it was a terrible bribe. Was it Menundus giving the locket up to da 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 Dolores on Bridge, who we don't even get named in this, but you better believe that we are just like as the Golden Trio is. Um, is that the bribe giving that up so he doesn't get caught? I'm not sure that's really a bribe. <laughs> I mean, she made that offer to him, so usually bribes are, I make an offer to you, and you decide to choose or not. So I guess that could be it. Um, I guess the other sort of big possibility that I just want to throw out there is, are we seeing this story of Harry being the cause of Dumbledore's death as a bribe to the wizarding world? to sort of an out for them accepting the change in government. Um, oh, you want a story that you can point to so that you're not just going along with a crazy maniac? Here you go. Take it and everything is fine. Like, is that sort of what we're seeing? I'm really curious how this title fits into this chapter. Uh, and I'm curious on your perspective of it, because I wasn't seeing anything really clear. And like I said, if there is any bribe going on here, I think for the most part they're not proper bribes, or uh, in Remus's part they just fail completely. Okay, I'm going to keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you next time.